Hello and welcome to this Bonito Crafts video tutorial for my new dragonflies design. Please do subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my new videos. In this tutorial I will guide you through all the techniques that you will need to complete both the variations of this pattern. This is my longest tutorial video yet as there is a lot to cover. If there is a particular section that you would like to see, I have put timings details in the description below the video so that you may skip to the parts that you would like to watch. So I'll give you a little bit of a look in detail at the pattern, at the design before we start. So this is the more complex of the two designs. And the reason this is more complex is because the wings have got a raised rib edge which then turns and then follows back in this crescent braid which is one of the more complicated Milanese braids. All the braids that I use that aren't my own are used with the permission of Pat Reed and Lucy Kincaid and can be found in the, the, the two Milanese books that they published. But all, all the diagrams and instructions for the braids that I use in my patterns are, are in the pattern pack. So we have a, a figure of eight body on this. And here I've put some beads along the centre. It's finished at a, at a point and then we roll back in both directions and then I taper off the braid. Then we'll work the wings. The bottom wing first, we work the raised rib edge, coming back with the crescent braid and then we roll round the edge of, of the wing. And then the second wing is worked in a similar way and it just tucks in behind the bottom wing. So that's the more complex version. The simpler variation, this one, has got a much less complex braid. This is lattice one and we don't have that raised rib edging either so you don't have to worry about sewing back into the rib which i'll show you when further on in the video uh, again i've got a rolled edge to the wings the body and the tail the tail section again i've worked in the figure of eight but in this this instance i haven't used a bead i've just crossed the pairs over in the middle again i shall show you that when i work the, the video uh, the body is, is added on in a similar way, just cloth stitch and then half stitch. And then the wings are worked from the body and then rolled back round. The patterns for both these variations can be found in my latest pattern pack. And as you can see, that comes in an A4 booklet, spine bound with a plastic spine. And if I just flick through here, you get your pattern. You get all your working diagrams for your braids, um, specific diagrams for different sections, the different techniques, and lots and lots of working notes for the different sections of the design. So there's quite a lot that goes into this pattern pack. I'm using Coates Cotton for this design. I use this for a lot of my coloured work. It's a really lovely thread. Um, it's a sewing cotton, it's a size 50. Um, it works out at about uh, 35 wraps per centimetre. If you are using the Threads for Lace book by Brenda Paternoster. Um, and I've used various shades of this aqua colour blue. So for this sample I'm going to be using this darkest colour for the body and for the tail and then I'm going to be using this shade and this shade for the wings. I've also used a thinker uh, metallic thread, a single ply metallic thread um, and this is shade 426. And all the threads for my designs can be purchased from www.roseground.com. 
um, she stocks the Coates cotton and the Finca threads. Uh, the Coates cotton can also be purchased from Claire's Lace. And that's, I think, www.clairslace.co.uk. All my pattern packs can also be purchased from roseground.com. OK, so we're ready to begin. I've pricked out my pattern and pinned it fairly centrally onto my lace pillow and we're going to start with the tail section so i'm going to lay my cover cloth i find these cover cloths with the hole are ideal for this type of lace so we're going to start with a false footing for the tail section you will need eight pairs in cotton of your chosen shade and you'll need two pairs of the metallic thread so I'm going to start off, I'm going to put a pin into pinhole A and on that pin I'm going to hang four pairs of cotton and I'm going to hang them open so they sit like a rainbow around the pin. Okay, with the two pairs on the left hand side I'm going to twist each one twice. And with the two pairs on the right hand side, I'm going to work cloth stitch and two twists. So this connects the four pairs together and makes an edge stitch. So like you would have along the, the side of the work where the worker comes in, works the egg stitch and comes back. This is you're creating that same effect, which is why it's called a false foot side, because it's to make it look exactly the same as a foot side. So now those are connected, I'm going to place a pin in the next pinhole to the right underneath the outside pair. I'm going to hang two more pairs on that pinhole, again open like a rainbow and sitting underneath that edge pair. I'm going to take the left hand pair and twist it twice and then with the right hand pair and my right hand edge pair I'm going to work a cloth stitch and two twists. I'm going to do the same again for the third pinhole. I'm going to pin under that edge pair. Hang two pairs open on the pin. Twist the left pair twice and work cloth stitch and two twists with the right hand pair. Now we've got the false footing in and we've got all our cotton pairs in, it's time to put in the two pairs of metallic passives. So I'm going to pin under the two left hand pairs in that pin to the left of our pin A and on there I'm going to hang two pairs of metallic thread, again open like a rainbow. This time I'm not going to twist the pairs. I'm going to leave the left hand pair and with the right hand pair, I'm going to work through four pairs of passives to the right. And I'm going to leave it there. So we've now got four pairs of passives in the middle, two metallic pairs, one either side, and then two pairs of cotton on either side of that. So now we need to do a little bit more preparation before we're ready to start the braid. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the very two central pairs, the two very central pairs in the braid, and we're going to work those in cloth stitch. And I'm going to tension that up and you can see that just slides all the pairs up and that metallic thread up close to the pinhole. Then counting from the left hand of the work, I'm going to count in one, two, three, four pairs and I'm going to take this pair in cloth stitch to the right through one pair and then counting in from the right hand side through one, two, three, four pairs and I'm going to take this pair to the left in cloth stitch and then with the two new centre pairs I'm going to work those in cloth stitch. So now we're ready, set up, 
ready to start the figure of eight braid. So before we start the braid, I'm just going to remove this temporary pin that we put in pin A. Now to start the braid, working from the left, we're going to bring the, the second pair in through two pairs in cloth stitch. And then with the third pair, we're going to work a turning stitch. So cross, twist, cross, twist, cross. Then I'm going to leave the inside pair, so the right hand pair behind. And with the left hand pair, I'm going to work back out to the left and cloth stitch through two pairs. Twist the worker twice and then work edge stitch of cloth stitch and two twists and pin up. So you need to be a little bit gentle with, with all your pairs because they're still a little bit loose where we've literally just got them in. So I'm going to tension up those left hand two pairs. I'm going to give a gentle tug on the metallic and the first passive and a slightly firmer tug with that turning stitch. So what we're aiming to do is we're going to aiming to get that turning stitch just sitting just below the pinhole on the left hand side. We're going to leave that there and we're going to come across to the right hand side of the work and we're going to do the same again. So we're going to bring the second pair in through one, two pairs in cloth stitch, turning stitch with the third pair, so cross, twist, cross, twist, cross. Leave the inside pair behind and return with the outer pair, cloth stitch through two pairs, twist twice, cloth stitch and two twists with your edge pair and pin up under two pairs. Again, tension the worker and the edge pair, little gentle tug on that metallic passive, the first cotton passive and then with that turning stitch. So we've now come in and we've done a turning stitch on each side. The next step is to come in and to either cross the passives in across the workers in the middle, or we're going to add a bead. So the first repeat I'm going to show you is to just cross the passives in the center. This is the method I've used in the simpler version of the dragonfly and they literally cross each other um, in a cloth stitch and two twists. So I'm going to from the left hand side I'm going to bring the second pair from the left and I'm going to cloth stitch through one, two, three pairs and I'm going to twist it twice. Then I'm going to take the second pair from the right and I'm going to cloth stitch that one, two, three pairs and twist that twice. So now our two workers are meeting in the middle. Cloth stitch and two twists with those two. And then the left hand pair will work out to the left. So one, two, three pairs in cloth stitch, twist twice, make my edge stitch and pin under two. And then the right hand pair from the middle and that will go through three pairs in cloth stitch to the right. Twist twice, work your edge stitch, cloth stitch and two twists, pin under two pairs and tension up. So now I'm going to run through and I'm just going to put a gentle tensioning on each of the passives from the right into the middle and then again from the left into the middle. And now we have that crossover in the centre. So coming to the left hand side, I'm going to take the second pair in. I'm going to work through two pairs in cloth stitch. Make a turning stitch with the third pair, so cross, twist, cross, twist, cross. 
leave the inner pair behind and return with the outer pair in two pairs in cloth stitch twist twice work my edge stitch pin under two then I'm going to hold on to the edge pair and the worker tension up the passive the first cloth stitch pair and then that turning stitch pair and then I'm going to come across and I'm going to do the same from the right hand side so two pairs in cloth stitch turning stitch with the third pair cross twist cross twist cross back in two pairs in cloth stitch twist twice edge stitch of cloth stitch and two twists pin under both pairs and tension up so tension my outer pairs hold on to them gentle tension and can you see I'm tugging each individual pair but when I get to the turning stitch I'm holding the both together and then I'm just tugging each pair in turn Take the two cotton pairs from the left of the centre and the two cotton pairs from the right of the centre. I'm going to take the first pair from the left through two pairs to the right. Then I'm going to come back, get the second pair from the left and take that through two pairs to the right. And that's one repeat of your braid complete. So I've done a repeat there and I've done the crossover in the middle without using a bead. So now I'm going to do the pattern repeat again. But this time I'm going to put a bead in place too. So coming to the left with the second pair in, cloth stitch through one, two, turning stitch through the third three four five so that's five movements so your cross twist cross twist cross is five movements I normally start as if I'm working cloth stitch and count five leaving the inner pair behind I'll come back with the left hand pair through two twist twice work my edge stitch and pin tension so holding on to my edge stitch and my worker I put a gentle tug on the first four passive threads and then hold on to both those turning stitch threads and give a tug there and because we've just come through that crossover I'm just going to put a little bit of tension on those other the next two pairs along where they're coming through that crossover point now moving to the right hand side of the work with the inside of the two, two pairs, so the second pair in, cloth stitch through one, two, turning stitch with the third. So as I said, cross, twist, cross, twist, cross, which is five movements. So one, two, three, four, five. I always count to five when I'm doing my turning stitches and if I get stopped halfway, I always have to undo it and start again. So leaving the inner pair behind, come back with the right hand pair through two pairs in cloth stitch, twist twice, cloth stitch and two twists for the edge stitch, pin under two pairs, tension up the edge and leave the worker, tension individually on the first two passives and then together for that turning stitch. Now back to the left and I always find it's useful when you're working a braid to get a routine, get a rhythm. So if you do this section on the left, then on the right, then back to the left, then back to the right, rather than doing, um, if I start on the left, I always start on the left. If I start on the right for one repeat and start on the left for the next repeat, what can happen is it can shift the tension of your braid and make it a little bit wonky. And you, you want to keep that central. So 
if you start on the left always start on the left and be very careful with your tensioning Milanese is all about the tensioning so now I'm going to come in ready to put my bead on so in exactly the same way as we did when we did the crossover I'm going to take the second pair from the left cross stitch through three pairs and twist twice and then I'm going to take the second pair from the right cross stitch through three pairs and twist twice so now we're ready to put a bead on so I'm going to find my bead and I'm using for this I'm using a size 11 black seed bead get a decent quality seed bead because a, a cheap bead you get a lot of size variation if you pay that little bit extra and get a decent quality seed bead it really is worth it because they're much more uniform so I'm going to pick up one of these beads on my crochet hook like so and then I'm going to attach the bead between the two middle threads. So if I just separate these here, these middle pairs, so I've got the two centre pair, centre pairs, and I'm going to move the outer threads out. So I've got the two middle threads. Now I'm right-handed, so I'm going to hook the left-hand thread. But if you're left-handed, you can hook it under the right-hand thread. It makes absolutely no difference. So I'm hooking under the left hand thread, but if you're left handed, you can hook it under the right. So I'm going to hook under the thread and then I'm going to slide that bead off the hook And onto the thread so that I have got the bead and a loop can you see my hook is just sitting through that loop so now we've got that loop we are going to pass the bobbin from the right hand side through that loop to secure the bead in place okay so the bead is in place between the two bobbins. Then I'm just going to pull those two bobbins apart to snuggle up the bead in position. Lay those back in position on the pillow. And then I'm going to the left hand pair with its partner twist twice and the right hand pair with its partner twist twice. And your bead is now in place. And as you work out to the edge and tension up, that'll sit right up close up to the top of the, the work. So going back to the left hand side, I'm going to take this pair out to the left. So one, two, three pairs in cloth stitch, twist twice, work my edge stitch and pin. Tension up that edge pair. Then give a gentle tug on the passives. And I'm going to take the right hand pair out to the right hand side through three pairs in cloth stitch, twist twice. Cloth stitch and two twists for my edge stitch. Pin under two. And again, tension up. So I'm just going to put a gentle tug on each of these passive pairs and you can see now that that bead is, is sitting nicely in the middle there so now as before I should go back to the left hand side and we're going to come in and out and do our turning stitch on the left so cloth stitch through two pairs turning stitch with the third, cross, twist, cross, twist, cross, back through two pairs with that inside pair, twist twice, cloth stitch and two twists for the edge, and pin. 
thêm and tension up remembering I'm tugging on both threads of the of that turning stitch pair then I'm going to go to the left to the right hand side even and I'm going to do the same again here so cloth stitch through two pairs turning stitch with the third cloth stitch back through two pairs twist twice edge stitch Tension up those inner passives and that turning stitch. And again, we're ready to do the final section of this repeat, and that's to do the, the crossover in the middle with the two pairs, two inside pairs from the left, the two inside pairs from the right, in half a spider. So that's first pair through and the second thread pair through so they are crossed over in the middle I'm now going to continue to work this tail section all the way to the bottom till I get to where it's marked B on the pattern and then I'll show you how I finish off how I start the roll and then once I've done the rolled edge the tapered roll on the edge of that so I've worked as far as pin B on both sides. I've completed this final repeat of the, the decorative braid, including the crossover where I crossed the, the four middle pairs through each other. So now we need to bring in the two workers um, to create one single worker because this last section is going to be worked in cloth stitch because that's where we want to reduce the pairs. So I'm going to bring the worker from the left, so the second pair from the left, and I'm going to work it through three pairs in cloth stitch. And I'm going to leave it there. And then I'm going to go back to the right and take the second pair in from the right and work back to the left in three pairs. To the middle so my two workers are now meeting in the middle and now I'm going to work a turning stitch with these two and then continue with one pair as the worker and the other will drop down to become passive so I'm going to do a turning stitch one two three four five movements so that's cross twist cross twist cross and tension that up and then I'm going to be pinning on the right hand side first so the right hand pair is going to be my worker and the left hand pair will just drop down now to become a passive. So I'm going to take that right hand pair back in three pairs of cloth stitch to the right hand side, twist twice, and cloth stitch and two twists, and pin up. So this last section is quite tight um, because you've got all the pit, it's got narrower than the previous sections, and you've currently got all the pairs in. And we need to start reducing them so I'm just tensioning all those pairs down you see I'm just giving a tug on each one in turn so now if I look if I just move these out of the way I've now got one two three four rows left to work I've currently got ten pairs and I want to get down to four pairs to be able to do my rolled edge so I know I've got to get rid of six pairs of bobbins. So they're going to come out relatively quickly because I've got four rows. So I'm going to be taking out a couple of pairs of row initially. So for this row, I'm going to take out from the left hand side, I shall leave the um, metallic passive and then look at this first two pairs. And I'm going to take the right hand bobbins of these two pairs. So I'm not taking a pair out in its entirety. I'm taking the right hand thread of the two pairs on that side and I'm just going to lay them to the back of the pillow. Then coming over to the right hand side, again leaving my passive metallic there, I'm going to take the right hand pair 
right hand pair of passives and I'm going to take the right hand thread of each of those two and lay that back. Then I'm just going to pick up my worker and work row of cloth stitch all the way across. So now I know I've got eight pairs left. Twist twice, work my edge stitch and pin up. So now I've, I've got four pairs left to lose and I've got one, two, three rows that I'm going to work. So because I threw out two pairs in the previous row, I think I'm only going to throw one pair out this, this row. So I'm going to go to the roughly in the middle because again, I don't want to touch these mag um, metallic ones just yet. So I'm going to go to the middle and I'm going to take of these two pairs, I'm going to take a right hand thread of the two pairs and lay that back. Then work across in cloth stitch. If you refer to my seagull video, I show you laying out pairs and I explain to you why I take the right hand threads of the two pairs when I take them out because if you lift the left hand two, two threads of the two pairs of bobbins you tend to leave a gap so uh, go and have a look at my seagull video and you'll see that. So at this point I've got my two metallic passives and I've got my two blue passives. I want to keep one blue in for the bottom and eventually get rid of the metallics. So the very last couple of rows I won't be able to avoid laying out a pair or a bobbin that's on the very edge of the work but because it's very tightly packed it, it's not going to be an issue. So for this row I'm going to take out, um, I think if I take out one of the metallic and one of the blue and I'll lay that back. Um, then I'll lay out a metallic and a blue on the right hand side and lay that back. So then I'll work through the final two pairs in cloth stitch, twist twice, work my edge stitch. And at this very last pinhole, so I place my pin and it's very last pinhole, I'll just lay back those final two metallic threads. So now I'm left with four pairs at the point. So that's my two edge pairs, my worker and my last remaining passive. So I'm going to put two twists on that last passive and then I'm going to work half a spider effectively with the two pairs from the left working through the two pairs from the right in cloth stitch. So the reason I do this, because I'm finishing at the point to roll back, is it gives a firm um, point to then roll back from. So I'm going to just tension those up there and I'm just going to angle that last pin out so that it's leaning towards me because then when I roll the edges um, that will be something to, to tension against. Now I'm going to turn my pillow round and we'll tie off those loose ends before I start with the rolling back. So I've turned the pillow round and I'm going to press down, push down all these pins, except for that one at the point, to get them out of the way for when I'm tying off these pairs. Now, when you're tying back, laying back in cloth stitch in, in Milanese, it's not always critical to tie them off. But I've just recently, I've got into the habit of doing it. It's just a little bit of peace of mind. And it means that whatever whatever happens with your lace, you're, you're not going to have those ends working their way through to the front and giving you little fluffy bits sticking out of the front. This just means that you won't get that. And and just a reef knot sitting on the back of the work, it's not going to add any bulk. You're not going to see any ends. I think it's probably the tidiest way to do it. So I've got those all tied off and I'm going to cut, I'll zoom out a bit, I'm going to cut those reasonably long. And 
and then that I can just twist that round and I'm just going to wrap a pin around that and just pin it I'll pin it through the middle of the braid there so can you see that I put that right down the middle if I just tuck that underneath my cover cloth then I'm not going to be in any danger of catching any of those threads when I come to do my rolled edge. So now what I want to do is I want to roll these edges in both directions and I'm going to taper the roll along one side of the tail section. And this is just a really useful, neat way of tying off, finishing a roll, tying it off. When you, when you finish at a point, if you're not rolling back, you need to bring some threads back in a bundle and tie them over the back of the work with some of the pairs laid out. But, but with this, by finishing at a point and rolling back, I can then lose them. I can taper them off along the side here and then I'll just have four tiny knots along the edge, which when you turn over, when you look at the front of the lace, you won't see them. In fact, I'm struggling to see where they are in this section. I think if I turn that over, it will be more obvious. Yeah, so if I turn it over and zoom in. So you can see just there, you can see the ends of my knots. But if I turn that back onto the front, you can't see. You can't see where I've sewn that in. It's just a really nice, neat finish. So I'm going to start rolling down the left hand side. I'm not going to start at the pin at the very top because it's because you've got those four pairs there, there's no stability to that pinhole, so you'll really struggle to roll into it. So I'm going to roll into this next one down and work along this way, and then I'll I'll leave pairs, leave threads out for the tapered roll, and I'll show you that. So let's zoom in. I'm going to take out the first pinhole this side of the, the point. Now if this is tight you can you can take out the next pin as well um, which helps you get some leverage so I'm going to have three threads are in the bundle and then one thread will be my rolling thread I want to try and use the bobbin with the most thread on it so this one's got quite a bit on it it's not a very big section but rolling does use a lot of thread having said that if you do run out of thread in your rolling thread you can just lay it into the bundle and pick up a different thread and carry on with that so I've got my rolling thread and I've got my bundle so the first thing I'm going to do and let's see if I can I think that's as far as I can zoom in I'm going to put my hook in the pinhole and under the edge of the work. I'm also putting it underneath that bundle of three threads that are my rolling bundle. Then I'm going to hook my rolling thread and I'm going to pull that back through to create a loop. Then I'm going to pass the bobbin through its own loop and I'm going to tension to the work side of the pillow. Then I'm going to do the roll. Now, this is the important bit. I'm keeping tension on that thread and I'm bringing it up and over the work, keeping tension all the time and that's rolling the knot around the bundle. Then I'm going to take the next pinhole out next pin out of the next pinhole and put it in the pinhole that I've just worked. Let's show you that again. So I'm going to put the hook through in the pinhole under the edge of the work. This can be quite tight. Under the rolling bundle, hook up the rolling thread, bring that back through the pinhole to make a loop, pass the bobbin through the loop. Now I'm sliding that very gently so that I don't get a loop of thread till the knot is on the, on the work, then keeping tension on that bobbin and rolling it over the work. 
take the next pin out, place it in the pin that I've just worked. So in the pin hole, under the edge of the work, under the bundle, pick up the rolling thread, pull it through to make a loop. Pass the bobbin through the loop, tension up, then keeping that tension on. My camera stand is in the way. Roll it over. And by doing that, keeping that tension on when you're doing that rolling over is what is going to give you a nice, neat, firm, smooth rolled edge. I'll do one more. one pass it through the loop keeping the tension on roll it over move the pin along and continue so I'm going to work a little way along here and then we'll go to the point and I will um, show you starting the other roll from the point because there we've got to roll into the tip of the, the section. So back at the tip of the, uh, the tail, now that we've started the roll on this side, we've got enough firmness on this end pinhole to be able to start the second roll. So again, I'm going to pick up the bobbin that's got the most thread on it. I'm going to take that pin out at the tip. So what we've got here is the three threads are actually to the left of the tip. So when you're rolling, you're not actually really rolling over them, but it's just to secure this tip and make some neat, neat end. So I'm going to come under, through the hole, under the rolling bundle, pick up my thread, Make my loop, pass my bobbin through the loop. Tension to that back. Can you see how much that is moving about? And then we'll take the next pin hold out along. Next pin out. And I shall put that back in the tip. And again, I'm angling it towards me. So now I can work the roll along the left the right hand side or the bottom side as I'm looking at it here so again under through the through the pinhole under the rolling bundle under the edge of the work pick up the rolling thread bring that through so if you have any issues with um, shredded thread or a thread that's breaking um, you can lay, if you've got a thread that's broken, you can lay another thread back in. Um, if you've got a thread that's shredded, I find sometimes if you use the crochet hook, you can split the thread. Try not to, as soon as you notice it split, stop and undo the sewing. And then what you can do is if you just rub the hook up and down the thread while gently pulling on it, you can usually ease that that split out that thread will have a weakness on it so what I would suggest is if you do that ease the thread out and then lay it down in the bundle and pick another one up to use as your rolling thread So I'll do a couple more. I'll zoom out so that you can hopefully see a bit more of the whole whole action from further out. You won't see the fine detail, but you'll hopefully see what I'm doing. So I've done that rolling thread. Take my pin out, put it in that pinhole. So hook in under the bundle, catch my thread make my loop, take my bobbin through, 
and then I'm keeping that tension on that bobbin. Take it through. Keeping that tension on that rolling thread. I can't stress enough how important that is. If you don't keep the tension on that rolling thread, you're going to end up with sort of a loopy edge. And the whole point of a rolled edge is to give you a nice firm edge. So if you're not keeping the tension on it and you're getting a loopy edge, you're not going to be getting the effect that you want from it. So I'm going to carry on. I'm going to get this to the point where we're going to taper the roll and I'll show you that. Now I've worked the rolled edge from the point back to here and from the point the other way I've gone all the way around the tail section. I'm now ready to start the tapered roll. So as you can see I've got one, two, three, four pinholes between the two sets of rolling threads. So I've rolled all the way up to here and here and I've got four pins in between. So these are the four pins that I'm going to work my tapered roll over. So I'm going to start with the threads coming. It doesn't matter which way you do it. I'm going to start with the threads coming from the left and then I'll continue with the threads from the right. But you, you can do it either way. It makes absolutely no difference at all. So I'm going to move those threads over to the right and I'm going to start with the threads from the left. I'm going to lift that first pin and I'm just going to pop these ones down so that they're out of the way. So I've lifted that first pin hole and I'm going to work my rolling stitch as normal. So under the edge, under the bundle, pick up my rolling thread it through, take the bobbin through the loop, keeping that tension and roll it across. Now I'm going to take the next pin out and pop it in that pin hole and then I'm going to take one of the threads from the rolling bundle and lay it back. So I've now got two, two threads in the rolling bundle and my rolling pair. So I'm going to work the next roll under the edge, under the bundle. Move the pin across, so take the next pin out, move that across and I'm going to lay a second pair, a second thread out. I'm going to work the next roll. So this time I'm only going under one thread in the bundle. Take my rolling thread. Take the next pin out, move it across and lay another thread out. So now you'll see that all I have left is my rolling thread and I'm going to work a roll around that last pin hole just around the edge of the work with my rolling thread pop that pin back in and then i shall lay this rolling thread to the back of my pillow so now i've got four pins four pin holes and at each pinhole I've got one thread laid back. Now I'm going to bring my rolling bundle and thread from the other end and I'm going to work exactly the same thing in reverse going in the opposite direction over the same four pinholes. So we'll take that first pinhole out, first pin out, work our rolling thread, so work our roll stitch, take that through the loop Again, remembering to keep that tension on. 
replace that thread and lay one out. So the next pinhole, I'll work a roll. Move the pin along and lay a thread out. Like the third pinhole, so this time I'm just rolling under one thread. Move the pin along lay a thread out and then the last one just with my rolling thread work my roll stitch replace the pin And lay it out. I'm just going to angle those pins and push them down. And now I have, I'll just make sure they're the right side of the pinholes. So I have two threads at each of the four pinholes, and now I can just tie those off with a reef knot and a half. If I zoom out slightly. So right over left and under the left thread, left over right and under the right thread, right over left and under the left thread. And I'm just making sure before I tie that the threads are on the same side of the pin as each other so that I don't get a bigger loop when I'm tying off. So now they are all tied. I shall trim those ends. And if I zoom in. I'm just going to use this pair of scissors which have got a just a fine pointed curved blade. And I'm just going to snip as close as I can to those knots, one pair at a time. And then coming back to our little bundle we tied off before. And I'm just going to trim again close to those knots and that's the tail section done Let's... I can't zoom out anymore I'm... oh yes I can there you go now the tail section is done I'm ready to start on the the head so for the head I'm using 10 pairs of cotton and two pairs of metallic thread. So if I put a pin in pinhole C and hang four pairs on there, open like a rainbow. So again, the same as we did on the tail, I'm going to twist the two left hand pairs twice 
and I'm going to work cloth stitch and two twists with the two right hand pairs to link them together. Then pin in the next pin hole along. I'm working this slightly quicker than I did the previous one because I've already demonstrated this in the, in the earlier part of the video. So two pairs open underneath that edge pair, twist the left hand pair twice, cloth stitch and two twists with the right, pin under the third pin hole, under the third, in the, in the third pin hole under the edge pair, two pairs open like a rainbow, Twist the left hand pair twice and cloth stitch and two twists with the right hand pair. So we've now got eight pairs in there and we're going to lay in our two um, metallic passive pairs. So in a similar way to how we did in the tail section I'm going to put a pin in the next pinhole to the left of pin C but this time you'll see I've put it under one pair on the left rather than two so I'm going to hang two metallic passives on there again like a rainbow and again I'm not going to twist those pairs I'm going to leave the left hand pair to the left side and the right hand pair I'm going to work in cloth stitch through six pairs to the right. So that's all my pairs in for the head. So I'm going to start working from the right hand side and I'm going to take the third pair from the right. So we've got our edge pair our metallic passives and this is the third pair from the right and this this third pair is going to be our worker on the right hand side so I'm going to take that pair all the way to the left through this the remaining five cotton and that metallic thread twist twice work my edge stitch with cloth stitch and two twists and now this is quite important, so I'm going to take that pin out because that was just a temporary pin and I'm going to repin underneath my worker. So these are all a bit uh, higgledy piggledy because it's the very first row. So now I'm going to carry on in cloth stitch with my edge stitch at, the, at each side until I get to pin D. Gently tension those metallic pairs at the outside and then give a gentle tug on each of the passives going across. And can you see when I'm tugging, as I get to the outside, I'm, I'm tugging outwards so that when I'm gently pulling the pairs, the outer pairs I'm pulling at an angle to keep them round that rounded shape and then the middle pairs I'm just pulling straight down. So I'm now at pin D and I'm now going to change from cloth stitch to half stitch and I'm going to add in those two final pairs. So I'm going to push down these pins at the back, leaving the last pin I've worked up and I'm going to place a temporary pin above the head on either side. So I'm going to hang my new pair on the support pin. And I'm going to lay it astride the left hand thread of that first cotton pair. And that'll, that's because when we come to start the half stitch, I shall be twisting this, this right hand pair. So if I'd laid it on the right, it would have just been coming back to the left. And we'll go to the right hand side. And that first cotton pair on the right hand side. And 
I'm going to lay it astride the left hand thread of this one and that again that will be so that I'll put the twist over it rather than I'm doing a twist. So now I'm ready to work half stitch and I'm going to keep the first two pairs on either side so the metallic pair on one um, cotton pair in cloth stitch on the left and on the right and I'll be working half stitch with the middle one, two, three, four, five pairs. So each of those five pairs I'm going to put a single twist on in preparation and then I'm going to come and pick up my worker from the left and I'm going to work through two pairs in cloth stitch. I'm going to place a single twist on the worker then half stitch through five pairs I don't need to twist the worker now because it's already got a twist on to come out of the half stitch then through two pairs in cloth stitch twist twice and work my edge stitch now I'm going to work one more row like this and then I shall drop those two new pairs down so two pairs in cloth stitch twist the worker once before we go into the half stitch half stitch through five pairs cloth stitch through the last two twist twice edge stitch and pin under two so now I shall just gently tension up all the pairs Then I'm going to remove the support pins and gently smooth the thread down to let it sit down with the work. You need to be careful with your tensioning because you don't want to uh, pull a hole in your work where that pair drops down. So that's the two pairs drop down. So now I'm going to continue in this way. Two pairs in cloth stitch, twist once. Five pairs in half stitch, two pairs in cloth stitch, twist twice, edge stitch, and pin. With half stitch, I find that I can tension up every other row. back at the left remembering that we had those two pairs drop down so you want to be a little bit careful with your tensioning and tension up that's the head and body section now worked I like to use half stitch for a space like this where it where it opens out and changes shape um, the reason is because where half stitch works the pairs work across the the lace when you tension it naturally pulls out to the outside edges so it helps to fill a shape like this where whereas if you were going to work it in cloth stitch you'd constantly be having to work to keep those outer cloth stitch pairs to the outside and also by doing this pair in this section in half stitch I haven't had to add so many pairs because half stitch you want to look a little bit open so I'm down at the bottom I've worked to the last pin hole and put the pin in but you might be able to see there's there's a little bit of space here between the end of my work and the top of the tail so I'm just going to work one more row in cloth in um, half stitch um, to get back to the left hand side
and this just serves to just fill in that little section where there would be a gap between the end of the work and sewing in so I shall work that edge stitch there but I haven't got a pin to pin up in so I'm just going to leave that and I'll, I'll sew that in at the end so I've now got 12 pairs in total and I've got three pinholes at the top of the tail that I'm going to sew into. So as a reminder, all my Milanese designs, where I'm sewing in from one section to the next, I always use top sewings or bar sewings. So instead of sewing into the edge of the work and under the edge, I'm sewing into the side bar of the pinhole. So I know I've got 12 pairs in total here and I've got three pinholes to sew into but each pinhole has got two sidebars so if I just move these threads over and if I take out that first pinhole so take out that first pin hopefully you can see it is a little bit tight I know that in this pin I've got a bar on this side and I've got a bar on that side so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew two pairs into each bar across these three pinholes so that's six sidebars 12 sewings so you may find if it's very tight you may find you want to take a pin out either side to to get in to work that sewing let's see how we go so i'm going to take my hook into the right hand sidebar and i'm just going to sew this edge pair in first I'm going to tie that off with a reef knot and a half. And lay that back. And then into the same bar, I'm going to sew in that first metallic pair. Now remember your metallic thread is much more delicate, it's a little bit stretchy um, which is why I tend to try and only use it for passive pairs and not, not for workers. So I'm going to carefully sew that in there and I'm going to tie that with a reef knot and a half too. So that's two pairs sewn into the right hand bar and I can just about see so there's my left hand bar of that pinhole and I'm going to sew the next two pairs into there. They so say it can be a bit tight and if you prefer you can use a lazy Susan for this. A lazy Susan is, is, a, is a, a needle set into a handle sometimes the needle is bent and you have a loop of thread through the needle um, and you push the needle under your sidebar to push the loop through to be able to pick up the first pair of your sewing thread so that's one then we'll have a second one you can see this is very tight so you may need to, to use a magnifying glass if you struggle to see it. So what happens here is by doing these bar sewings, The sewings are sitting over the top of the edge of the work and then what happens then is when you turn it over to the front and I should be able to show you here so if I show you the back I've worked the sewings into the bars so you can't see the edge of the tail section there but if I turn it over to the front 
you can see that raised edge of the tail section is nice and clear and that's because the sewings are going in over the top behind it rather than around the edge and that really does make a difference to the finish of your lace again you can see there on the wings the wings look like they sit underneath the edge because they're sewn into those sidebars and you can just see it a little clearer there where the thread of the wings is actually lighter than the thread of the the body and again here where i've done the wing section where this second wing sews in behind the first it makes that that first section sit on top so it just gives you a slight three-dimensional effect so i'm going to carry on and i'm going to sew the remaining pairs into the last two pinholes and the last four sidebars finishing off with the two pairs that i worked my uh, edge stitch with will go into that last pinhole then when i've done that i shall take the final two pairs that i sewed in and I shall roll them back round from here to here and sew them off and tie them off at that point. And then I'll be ready to, to show you how to do the two different types of wings. That's the body and the tail worked. Next, I'm going to work the bottom wing. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to work the bottom wing in the, the simpler lattice braid like this one and I'm going to work the top wing in the more complex braid that way I can show you all the different variations that you'll need to be able to work your dragonfly so I've placed a pin in that first pinhole there which is that will be pin E on the correct version of the pattern and I'm going to hang four pairs of cotton and for the lower wing I'm using the lighter shade the lightest shade of aqua as before with a false footing I'm going to twist the two left hand pairs twice and I'm going to work the two right hand pairs in cross stitch and two twists to link them around the pinhole. I'm going to work a false footing on the lower wing across four pairs, across four pinholes. And when I do the upper wing, I would be uh, working that across five pinholes. So in the working instructions, I've detailed Zoom out. The first sentence, all the instructions for this braid reference both the lower and upper wing. So E slash F or 5 slash 5, that should actually say 4 slash 5. The first letter or number refers to the lower wing and the second to the upper wing throughout. So starting at pin E slash F, work a false footing across four or five pairs. So for the lower ring, lower wing, I'm going to start at pin E, work a false footing across four pairs, which will give me 10 pairs in total. So this, my second false footing, twist the two pairs on the left, twist the pair on the left twice, cloth stitch and two twists with the right. Pin under the next pinhole under the edge pair. Twist the left pair twice. Cloth stitch and two twists with the right hand pair. And then on the fourth pin, again, two pairs open. Underneath that edge pair, twist the left pair twice, cloth stitch and two twists with the right hand pair. So now we have 10 pairs ready to work. So now we've got 10 pairs of the light 
aqua in we want to put in our two metallic passives and a further two cotton passive pairs so I'm going to put a pin in the next pinhole along to pin E which was our first pinhole we used and I'm going to hang on two metallic pairs again open like a rainbow and then inside the two metallic pairs I'm going to hang in two cotton pairs so leaving the left hand metallic pair and the left hand cotton pair to the left hand side I'm going to take the right hand pair of metallics and then the right hand cotton pair through eight pairs of passives to the right so we'll take the metallic across first so I've taken those through eight there so that's just before the edge pair and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to pick up and take across that right hand cotton pair as well so again working through eight pairs to the right so we now need we've now got 14 pairs in total and for this lower wing we need 15 pairs so i'm going to put a support pin just above the start of the wing in the middle and i'm going to hang one more pair into the braid and i'm going to hang it centrally across the passage so if we move out of the way our two edge pairs and our metallic and our last two cotton pairs we've laid in and then we're going to find the center point of the remaining pairs so i'm going to put it astride this pair which is left of the center so i'm going to hang it on the support pin making sure it sits between the pair the pins up there and i'm going to lay it astride the right hand thread of that pair so now we're ready to start uh, working with our worker and we're going to bring the worker thread across to the left hand side ready to start our braid so the worker is the fourth pair in from the right hand edge so we've got our edge pair our first metallic passive our first cotton passive and then this fourth pair in will be our worker and I'm just going to take that in cloth stitch all the way across to the left so through the remaining cotton passive pairs including that new one then through our new cotton pair and our new metallic pair then I'm going to twist that worker twice and I'm going to work an edge stitch, cross stitch and two twists. And then I'm going to lift this pin that I hung those two new pairs on and reuse that for my edge stitch. Now I've done that, I can tension up across the row to just tidy up all these passives and get them in place. And now we have 15 pairs and we're ready to start the lattice one braid so I am going to work it for this video exactly as I've written it in the instructions so with your with your pack you get the full instructions for the braid um, and you also get a diagram it really is worth persevering and trying to get used to reading a diagram. I find diagrams, when you've got a diagram for Milanese braids, if you can read it, um, it really does help. So we've got 15 pairs for this braid. We've got our two edge pairs. We've got our worker. And in this braid, we've got a single worker that goes back and forth for the whole whole braid obviously it changes with the edge stitch but you've got one worker then I've got my two metallic pairs and they will stay as a passive 
throughout the braid so they don't come in if you start to see metallic pairs drifting across your braid you've made a mistake because those two metallic pairs should just work down the outside edge and then we've got the remaining passive pairs so we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten passive pairs so i shall zoom in and we can get started so we've got 10 passive pairs and the first thing that we're going to do is leaving with the metallic passive pair at either side of the of the braid we're going to group the remaining pairs into sets of two so we've got two pairs here two 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 and two so can you see I've got five lots of two pairs and each of those sets of two pairs we're going to work in cloth stitch and this is what I refer to as the crossovers row so I'm going to cloth stitch those two pairs those two pairs those two pairs those two pairs and this last two pairs so that's the crossovers row complete now we're going to work two rows with one formation of twists and then two rows with a second formation of twists and I'll explain that as I go along. So for the first two rows, so steps two and three in your, your instructions, we're going to take the worker from the left hand side and we're going to work in cloth stitch through three pairs. So that's our passive and our first crossover. Then I'm going to twist the worker once, just the worker, and then I'm going to cloth stitch through two pairs and twist the worker once. Cloth stitch through two pairs, twist the worker once, cloth stitch through two pairs, twist the worker once, and then we're going to cloth stitch through the final two pairs of crossover plus that metallic so three pairs at the end twist the worker twice work your edge stitch and pin under two pairs then i'm going to return in the same manner so i'm going to cross cloth stitch through three pairs twist the worker once cloth stitch through three pa two pairs twist the worker, cloth stitch through two, twist the worker once, cloth stitch through two, twist the worker once and then finally through two, three pairs, twist the worker twice, work your edge stitch and pin. So now I'm going to tension, so I'm going to tug each bobbin in turn across the row and while I'm tensioning this row I'm also going to remove that support pin so that we can pull down that extra passive that we put in there so this first couple of rows it's all a little bit tight because the braid's not at its widest so you do really need to focus on making sure you tension every single individual bobbin. So that's the first two rows with the first variation of crossover uh, of twists. So now we're going to work another two rows and we're going to put the twists in a slightly different place. So whereas we've put two twists, for example, we've put two twists, uh, uh, one twist either side of this pair, two pairs. On the next two rows we're going to split that so the twist is going to be in the middle and what that does is it pushes that pair out which will become apparent when we do our next set of crossovers so for this this two rows we're going to work through two pairs in cloth stitch twist once and then again two pairs in cloth stitch twist once Two pairs in cloth stitch, twist once, two pairs in cloth stitch, twist once, 
two pairs in cloth stitch just once and then our final two pairs twist twice work out edge stitch and pin under two then come back in the same way so through two pairs in cloth stitch twist once through two twist once through two twist once through two twist once through two twist once through the final two twist twice work your edge stitch so remembering your cloth stitch and two twists for your edge stitch is always the same and then we'll tension so what you will see is you'll see the path of the passives is slightly slanting out so you've split the pairs so that they're starting to head off in a diagonal direction and we're going to reinforce this by the next row of the pattern. So now we're going to work the next set of crossovers. So in the first set of crossovers we left one pair of passives at either side which was our two metallics. For this set of crossovers we're going to leave two pairs of passives at either side and that gives us two, four, six, eight pairs of passives left in the middle and we're going to group those into twos so they form a natural group of two because of where we offset the twists in those last two rows so these four sets of two we're going to work a crossover with those so cloth stitch these two together cloth stitch these two together cloth stitch these two together and cloth stitch these two together. So we can now bring all pairs down. And the last two rows that we worked, we're going to repeat again. So this will be, pick up our worker. Two pairs in cloth stitch, twist once. Two pairs in cloth stitch, twist once, two pairs in cloth stitch, twist once, two pairs in cloth stitch, twist once, and again, and one last time, twist twice, work your cloth stitch and two twists, edge stitch and pin. And then we'll come back the same way. So again, two pairs in cloth stitch, twist the work once, all the way across the row. tension up and if you look carefully you can just see the braid starting to come together and then for the final two rows of the, the complete braid repeat we're going to go back to our original series of twists so we're going to start off we're going to work through three pairs in cloth stitch twist once and then we're going to work repeats of two pairs in cloth stitch twist once two pairs in cloth stitch twist once 
two pairs in cloth stitch Oops. twist once and then our final three pairs in cloth stitch twist twice work your edge stitch and pin and then we will return in the same way so we'll start off through the first three pairs twist once then two pairs twist once two pairs twist once two pairs twist once the final three pairs which include that metallic twist twice work your edge stitch pin up and tension so that second set of uh, the last two rows of twists where we're offsetting the twists from the previous two you can see it's now pushing our passives out to that diagonal again reinforcing where we did the crossovers for the second time so we did an original set of crossovers up here and then we did the two lots of twists between our passives and then we've done another set of crossovers and this second set of crossovers are slightly offset from the first set which pushes the passives out into diagonal lines then we do the four rows with the twists in in reverse to the way we'd started and then we're back to the beginning so we now start at the beginning of the pattern instructions for the braid again so this time we'll leave out two metallic pairs either side we group the remaining 10 into groups of two and work each group of two in cloth stitch so again we're reinforcing that diagonal path of the passives across the braid and then we're back to that first set of rows with the cloth stitch and twist so three pairs and twist and then it's two twist two twist two twist and then for the last three pairs before we twist twice and work the edge stitch coming back we start with three pairs twist and then it's two, twist, two, twist, two, twist, then the final three. Work your edge stitch. So we've done two rows in that way, tension up. And as the braid is now widening, you're really going to start to see the path of those passives working diagonally across the braid. So now we'll start to offset the twists. So instead of three at the beginning, we're going to do two twist two all the way across two twist two twist two twist and the last two twist twice edge stitch and pin up And then back in the same way so two 
twist, two, twist, two, twist, two, twist, two, twist, two, twist twice. Work your edge stitch and pin. So that's our four rows of cloth stitch with twists and now we're ready to do the next set of crossovers so this is the middle set of crossovers of the pattern repeat and you can see if you look at the passives you can see that they're, they're they've split to form your new sets of two so you can see here where we've put these twists in it's pushing these two pairs together so we know that those are the two pairs that are going to be worked as a crossover so coming across We'll leave two pairs on the left hand edge, cross over with those two, cross over with those two, and those two, and the crossovers are in cloth stitch, and then leave the last two. So now we'll work two rows the same as we did with the previous two rows. So two, two pairs in cloth stitch and a twist two then twist two then twist two then twist two then twist and the last two and twist twice and work your edge stitch And then we'll work back two and twist, two, twist, two, twist, two. Oh, now look, got to making sure your pairs aren't twisted before you work through them. Two, twist. Final two, twist twice, work my edge stitch, pin, and tension. One of the good things about the frequent tensioning in Milanese is that when you're tensioning, you can look at your thread paths and you can hopefully spot any mistakes before you go too much further. So we've done two rows like that and now we need to do two rows to offset the twists to go back to how we started the very start of the pattern repeat so that will be three pairs in cloth stitch so we're pushing by doing that we're going to start pushing that pair of passives out across that diagonal twist then two twist Two, twist, two, twist, and three pairs at the end, twist twice, cross stitch and two twists for my edge, and pin. Then come back, so three pairs to start with, twist, two, twist, two, twist, two, oh, twist, and then three pairs at the end, twist twice, work my edge stitch. So we're now back in the position to do the initial set of crossovers from the first line of the instructions. So that that is two complete pattern repeats of the lattice one braid. And you can see now where you do those crossovers and they offset every four rows, you're sending the passive pairs in that diagonal line and when they reach the edge, they'll come back across. 
So I'll carry on and then when I get to the bottom of the wing, I can show you how I start to reduce the braid to go back into cloth stitch to finish off this wing and sew into the body. I'm down towards the end of this braid now and it's starting to narrow in. So I'm going to want to, to start finishing the, the pattern in the braid and also start throwing pairs out um, ready for when I get to the, the bottom end of the braid. So I'm at the point where I'm ready to do four sets of crossovers. So I've got four sets of pairs here. So I'm going to do those as normal. So I'm going to cloth stitch each of those group groups of two pairs. Now, normally I would work through the first two passives, twist the worker, the second two passives, twist the worker. But because I want to reduce the braid, I'm going to work through the, the first four passives before I put a twist. And I shall work through the last four passives without a twist. So we're starting to reduce the pattern in the braid. So if I come through from the left, so that's four pairs, twist, two pairs, twist, two pairs, twist, and then four pairs to finish. Twist twice, work my edge stitch. and then I shall come back in exactly the same way so one two three four twist and two twist two twist and then four twist twice and edge stitch and pin and tension up again as with at the very start of the braid you've got to pay just that bit more tension attention to your tension um, because the pairs are getting a bit more tightly packed again So now we're getting narrower, I can actually throw a couple of pairs back here. So I'm going to take them in those sets of four. So we've got one, two, three pairs of cotton here. So if I lay back the right hand thread of the first two pairs of cotton, and then on the right hand side, one, two, three pairs. So I'm going to lift the right hand threads of two of those pairs. Now we're going to come back and we're, we're going to be offsetting our twists. So we've got two pairs here plus the cotton. We've laid one back. So we're going to take another pair in. So again, we're going to work through four pairs in cloth stitch. So one, two, three, four, and twist, then two, then twist, then four again. So as you can see, we're, we're quite quickly actually reducing that braid and we're, we're bringing the decoration in the braid down to a point rather than a harsh straight line stop. And when I've done this, I shall show you on, the, on my worked sample. So four, and twist, two in the middle, and twist, one, two, twice and work my edge stitch and pin. Tension up. So 
So we're ready to do the crossovers and the crossovers you can see we've got a natural group of four in the middle or group of two pairs in the middle should I say, four threads. So we're only going to do one crossover in this repeat. So we've, we've very quickly brought that pattern down. So I'll do my first two rows. One, two, three, four, and twist. Two in the middle, and twist, and four. Work my edge stitch. And pin up. Work back in the same manner. So two, three, four, and twist. Two in the middle, twist. Four, twist twice. Work my edge stitch. Now I can lay further pairs out from either side. So we've got a pair from the left. Again, the right hand thread of two pairs and on the right. Then we can do the next offset row. So I'm going to, in this case, I'm going to work through four pairs on the left. One twist in the very middle of the row and then four pairs on the right. So I'm going to do two rows like this and then I'm just going to go into straight cross stitch, uh, cloth stitch across the row. So back through four, twist once, through four, Twist twice, work my edge stitch. Pin and tension up. And then now I'm just going to continue in cloth stitch across the row. Um, from now on as I get closer to the body section if I hold the threads out of the way you can see that the angle of my braid is has changed so if I were to carry on pinning here and then back I will run out of pairs on the right hand side before I run out of pinholes on the right hand side before I run out of pinholes on the left so what I'm going to do now, before I go any further, I'm going to work a blind pin on the right hand side. So to work a blind pin, I've worked through, I've not put my twists on the worker and I'm pinning up in that pinhole and I'm not working the edge stitch. So I'm now going to work back and forth across the row in cloth stitch. Not forgetting that as I'm narrowing the braid, I'm still thinking about throwing pairs out so that I can get down to that six pairs at the very end of the uh, section. So I shall throw out a pair here and I shall throw them out roughly in the middle of the braid. So taking two pairs, taking the right hand thread of each pair. And then I'm going to work back across to the right now 
this time I'm going to twist my workers twice. I'm going to work my edge stitch. I'm going to remove the pin that I placed previously and repin underneath the edge stitch. Now you must be very careful now when you're tensioning up. So the passives are fine. So we'll tension the passives nice and firmly down. But be very careful not to put too much tension. Can you see that just pulls in a little bit? So I'm not going to put any more tension than that on the other edge pair because that is the pair that was the worker coming across from that, that blind pin. So if I put any more tension on that, it's going to pull that thread in and you're going to get a, a kink. So carrying on now, again, laying out pairs until I get to the very base of the section. And I should have just six pairs in total to sew in to the side of the body. So I'm down to the bottom. I've got six pairs. I've worked the last pinhole and then worked a final row across as I did when I was working the body. And then I've got one, two, three pinholes, each with two sidebars. So I can sew in one pair into each of those sidebars. So I've got to this third pinhole along. Now I could sew in uh, one pair into this sidebar and one pair into this sidebar. But thinking ahead, knowing that I'm going to need to sew in pairs on the second wing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew them both into this right hand sidebar and then I can use the pairs from here to, to roll back round this side first. They will then sew in on this side of the, the lower wing. Then when I come to do the upper wing, it just gives me a little bit more space to sew in the pairs as I come down the top hand, the top um, wing. So if I sew these in here, that one's getting a little short. And I'm just going to pop a reef knot on this, these two pairs because they're going to be rolling. It's not quite so critical. And it just means there's less bulk before I start rolling back. I've taken both of those into that right hand bar of that pinhole. Let's get rid of that loop. Sew that in. Just do a reef knot on there. Then I'm going to pop that pin back in just to keep that other bar nice and stable. And then I'm going to roll back round with three of these cotton threads and the two metallic from this side. So because this one is getting quite short, I'm going to discard that one and use the other. So I'm going to roll around here. So I'll just start off that roll. Um, but you can always go back to the earlier part of the video. It's exactly the same as how I rolled the um, the edge around the tail and then around the body. So I'm going to take this roll all the way round and I can sew those pairs in at the bottom edge of the wing where it meets the body. Now you've got two and a half pairs so obviously um, you're going to have an odd thread so all I do is tie off so often tie off the metallic thread and then one of the cotton pairs and then just when you've sewn in and tied off the cotton pair just add a knot with the second the remaining cotton pair just tie that off on top of the knot of the other one and that will hold it nice and secure and then we'll be ready to start the upper wing and the upper wing I'm going to work with the crescent braid. I'm working the right hand wings 
of the dragonfly when you do yours when you come to work the left hand wings you have to work them in mirror image so you have to uh, if you're working a road to the, the left for example um, to start your braid you need to bear in mind that you're working that to the right so you you just need to reflect everything but hopefully once you've done the first wing you'll you'll be fine you'll be absolutely fine with that so on i go and what this does is it just puts that I, I tend to just keep an eye on the the location of the metallic try and keep it sitting at the bottom of the the bundle so that it'll show through as much as possible on the edge because you just get that little very light glittery effect and i can't get it to show up on the camera very well So I showed you the lower wing worked in the lattice one braid. Now I'm going to show you the upper wing um, and this time I'm going to, to work it in the, the crescent braid, which is the more complex. You can see from my samples that this one I've done with the crescent braid on the wing and this one I've done with the lattice. So I've done the same braid for both wings in each version. You can change that. You can have a crescent and a lattice in one dragonfly that's entirely up to you but I, I kind of like to keep them the same so to start off this more complex version we've got a raised rib edge that runs along the top side of the wing and then we work from the tip we work the braid back so to start with, I'm going to sew in six pairs for the braid, for the rib. So rib is sometimes known as ten stick. Uh, ten stick gets its name from using ten sticks or ten bobbins, which is five pairs. Um, I'm referring it to a rib because technically it's not ten stick because I'm using six pairs. But, uh, you know, that's, that's just terms, different terms, different people use. So to start off with, I'm going to sew in six pairs. So I need four pairs in cotton and two pairs in metallic. And I'm going to sew those in over the first couple of pinholes. So we've got two bars for this pinhole and then I'm going to use one bar for the next pinhole along. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I've got a little cheats method which makes this slightly easier and it makes less bulk at these pinholes because we're going to be sewing back into those when we've completed the, the braid. So I'm going to hook under the right hand bar and on this one I'm going to have two pairs of cotton so I'm going to hook one cotton thread through that bar and bring a loop through and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass the second pair I'm going to pass one of the bobbins from the second pair through that loop so that my pair is linked on that sidebar so that's two pairs in then on the second pinhole, hook in my cotton pair. It's actually quite difficult to see with the, the camera in between me and my lace. So I've hooked in a cotton pair to make a loop. And this time I'm going to pass one of the metallics through that loop so that's a cotton pair and metallic pair on that pinhole I'm going to take the next pinhole along out and I'm going to pop that pin back in there just to give that a little bit of strength and then I'm going to hook under the right hand bar of this pinhole 
and I'm going to hook in a cotton pair hook in that cotton pair pull the loop through and then pass the metallic through that one as well so now I've got a cotton pair on the inside let's take some of those twists off that it's given it and a metallic pair again untwist that where it's twisted itself up so I've got a cotton pair and metallic pair and second metallic pair and another cotton pair so those are our passives for the uh, the rib and then we've got two cotton pairs on the edge one of those is those will be the edge pair and the worker so for these two pairs I'm going to work a cloth stitch and two twists to set up my edge pair and then I'm going to work the rib section so to work a rib we're going to work in cloth stitch through the passives so in this case we're going to work through three passive pairs and then with the final passive pair we're going to work a turning stitch so cross twist cross twist cross leave the inner pair behind or the the edge pair behind work back with the inner pair should i say through three pairs in cloth stitch twist twice work my edge stitch and pin once i've come across and worked back to my edge stitch now i'm going to tension up the worker and the edge pair tension the passives and tension that turning stitch so we've got a nice even flat rib so again cloth stitch through three pairs turning stitch with the fourth leaving the left hand pair behind or the, the pair that's on the lower side of the wing behind return with the inside pair through three pairs in cloth stitch twist twice work my edge stitch and pin up once i've pinned up tension my worker and edge pair tension the three passives in the middle and then gently tension the turning stitch so that it lies flat and even so i'll show you that a couple more times so three pairs turning stitch with the fourth return through three pairs twist twice work my edge stitch pin up and tension so I've tensioned the passives and then the turning stitch my worker and my edge pair, tension my passives and tension my turning stitch. So I'm going to continue with this rib all the way along the wing until we reach the point at the end of the wing where there are arrows marked on the outside of the pattern. pinhole before the marked pinholes marked with the arrows so I'm just going to pin up I'm working quite close to off the edge of my pillow here 
um, because we're coming out to the end of the wingtip. I don't like using a pillow that's too big. So because there's only sort of half a dozen pairs, I'll, I tend to put up with it just for the time it needs to get round here. So as you can see, I've, I've worked that last pinhole before the arrow. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six arrows on this larger upper wing, and there are five on the lower one. So at each of those arrows, I'm going to add in two pairs and rather than work around the rib and then sew them into the sidebars, you can add them as we go around the bend. So I'm going to work across and back one more time, do my turning stitch, come back. Twist twice but I'm not going to work my edge stitch just yet. So before I work my edge stitch, I'm going to slide a pair of bobbins up under the worker. I'm going to lay it across to the back of the pillow. Now I'm going to work my edge stitch, cloth stitch and two twists, and pin up under two. Do my tensioning. So tension up my rib and then before I go back I'm going to slide another worker uh, another passive up under the worker and lay that back so I'm going to do that at each of these five pinholes or six pinholes in this case until I have that extra 12 pairs added into my work. So we've come to the outside edge again. Slide a passive up under the worker and lay it across the pillow. Work my edge stitch, cross stitch and two twists. Pin up and tension. Tensioning my rib so it sits nice and even. Slide another pair of passives up underneath the worker and lay back before working in and out the next section of rib. So I've just slid up the final pair to go in and tensioned up my rib. So now I'm going to work in and out one more time. My turning stitch. Twist twice. Work, work my edge stitch and pin up. tension and now I've got all my pairs in the braid and I'm ready to bring them over to the front at this stage I'm also going to take out one of the metallic passive pairs because we only have one running down the lower side of the, the wing Press those down up to the top there. So I'm going to lay out one of these metallics and I'm just going to lift out. Normally I'd take the right hand pairs, but that one's a bit, bit low on the in length. So I'm just going to lay those out. It's very tightly packed there, so it's not going to be an issue. So I've laid that pair out and now in turn, making sure that I don't get them caught around the pins. I'm going to bring down all those new passive pairs from either side of those pins. So 
So I was very careful when I laid them in to keep them in order. To lay that down. And they're going to sit over the top of the rib around that top edge of the wing. Take your time, don't rush it. So for this upper wing, I have a total of, now I've laid out that metallic pair, I have a total of 17 pairs. And when you're working the lower wing and you only have five pin holes where you're adding pairs in, you'll have a total of 15 pairs. So now we've got all our pairs laid down, we're ready to, to do one final row of cloth stitch in preparation to start our braid. So we've got all our new passive pairs here. We've got our passive pairs or our remaining passive pairs from the, the ribbed edge and they just sit to the right of all those new passive pairs or to the lower side of the wing. Remember, if you're working the other wing, you're working it in mirror image. So when I say right here, it'll be left for the other wing. So we're going to take our worker and we're going to work a whole rowing cloth stitch all the way through. When we get over to the right hand side, oh, those have come out of order a bit. Let's get those back in order. So when we get over to this side, I'm going to sew in to the next pinhole along. So we're not sewing into the pinholes that we hung the new pairs on. I'm starting with the next pinhole along. So you can see that I left the pins sticking up where I laid the new pairs in and I pushed down all the others. So I'm going to take that first pin out. Let's put those down. And I'm going to sew this pair in here. I'm going to take the top thread and lay it to the back of the pillow. I haven't put any twists on this. Then I'm going to take my hook and you can take out uh, additional pins. You can take out additional pins to give yourself working room here. So I'm going to take my hook through the bottom bar of that pinhole and I'm going to pick up the lower of the two threads of the worker and bring it through. Then I'm going to pass its partner through and tension. And before I go any further, any pins that I've removed, including the one where I've made the sewing, go back in because that is your outside edge. And if you start leaving pairs out, pins out, then it's all going to fall apart. So now you can see this looks a little bit gappy. I promise it will be fine. By the time we've come in and worked our turning stitch to start our braid, it'll push all those threads up so that they'll all sit behind the passives for the rib. So we're now ready to start our crescent braid. OK, so this is quite a complex braid. Um, so the instructions are very wordy, but again, I've done a diagram and it really does help if you're able to read and follow a diagram to work this pattern. So the lower wing has got 15 pairs and the upper wing, which we're working, has got 17. So this would be 16 and 18 pairs, respectively, if there was an edge stitch on both sides. So if you, if you look at the diagram, you'll see that I've got an edge stitch on this left hand side. Yet, as you all have just seen, I've sewn in on the left hand edge because we've got that that rib edging. So if you were just working this, if you decided not to work the rib edging, then you can start with false footing to get your your pairs in. And you'll have a, a foot side on either side. So you would have 18 pairs for the wider wing 
or 16 for the narrow. So the number of passives on the outside of the braid varies. So for the lower ring, there are wing that there are, are three passives on either side and for the upper wing which we're working there are four passives on either side so in the instructions I've got x for the number of pairs um, so that tells you that depending on the wing you're working you'll either have three or four passives so we're going to start off and I shall as I did with the lattice braid, I shall follow the directions as I have written them so that you can follow along with me. So let's zoom in. So following the instructions with the worker starting on the left. So for the left, read the upper side of the wing. So if you're doing the reflection, that will be the right. We're going to work through X pairs in cloth stitch, which we know in this wing is four. So four pairs in cloth stitch, twist the worker twice, then cloth stitch through three pairs and that's the same regardless of the width of the braid and we're going to work a turning stitch with the central passive to create two workers. Now I put a pin in this, this turning stitch, it helps keep it nice and firm in the work. So I'm going to work a half stitch, a pin, and then a cloth stitch. So the first two movements of your turning stitch are your half stitch. I'm going to pin between the two pairs and then carry on with movements three, four, and five of the turning stitch, which is effectively a cloth stitch. So three, four, five. That's our turning stitch. We now have two workers. One will go back out to the left and the other will go to the right. So following the instructions, step two, bring the left hand worker out to the left through three pairs in cloth stitch, twist twice, then through, in this case, four pairs in cloth stitch, and you would work your edge stitch, but because we don't have an edge stitch, because we have our rib, we're going to sew in to the rib the same way we did previously. So into the bottom bar of the pinhole. So I've put that top thread up out of the way. I'm going into the bottom bar of the pinhole. Collecting that bottom thread. taking the partner through it tensioning up and putting the pin back in the pinhole so that's our worker out to the left hand side we're now going to return to the middle of the braid and we're going to take the other our new worker out to the right, so three pairs in cloth stitch. Again, one, two, three pairs in cloth stitch, twist twice, four, pass four pairs in cloth stitch, twist twice, and we have an edge stitch on this side so we work the edge stitch and pin up so both our workers are now sitting at the outside edge of the work so go moving on to step four we're going to twist the two center pairs so that's the pair either side of that pin in the middle. We're going to twist those two twice and we're going to work them together in cloth stitch and two twists. Now we're going to return to the left hand side and with the left hand worker we're going to cloth stitch through four pairs in this case. Twist twice 
then we're going to work through one pair in cloth stitch and one pair in a turning stitch cross twist cross twist cross leave the inner pair behind come back in one pair in cloth stitch twist twice four pairs in cloth stitch to the edge and work out edge sewing so lift that next pin along now these sewings because you have the rib edge they are going to be quite tight I would recommend keeping all the pins above it pushed down and take out that next pin along if you need it to access the pinhole but you must make sure that you put any pins back in when you've completed the sewing again no twists on these sewings and they're going to sit nicely behind that bit so that's the left hand side i'm going to tension up tension my passive pairs and tension on that turning stitch so can you see i'm tensioning on that turning stitch so that i'm getting this little gap here where you can see my twisted pairs i'm going to go over to the very right hand side and we're going to do the same on the right i'm going to pick up my worker cloth stitch through four pairs twist twice cloth stitch through one pair make a turning stitch with the next pair leave that inner one behind come back through one pair twist twice cloth stitch through four remember that would be three for the in the lower wing make my edge stitch and pin up tension up remembering to carefully tension with your worker and that turning stitch so that that turning stitch sits where you want it to sit so now we're going to come to the middle of the work and with the central four pairs we're going to twist the left pair twice and work it in cloth stitch and two twists with the next pair to the right then the right hand pair of the four twist twice working cloth stitch and two twists with the next pair to the left now work the two new center pairs in cloth stitch and two twists and then again in cloth stitch and leave so you, it's kind of like a little short plait it is and it isn't but it, it's it's quite tight up there so i've tensioned that up and that's our middle section started now we're going to come back to the left hand side and pick up our left hand worker and we're going to come through four pairs to the right twist twice through one pair in cloth stitch and a turning stitch with the next pair leave that inner one behind come back through one pair twist twice four pairs to the edge you can see i forgot to put that previous pinhole back in so i shall do that now make my sewing tension up so that's my four passive pairs and there with my turning stitch we'll pop that pin back in because we don't want that edge to pull in tension up 
pinch knot and we'll go to the right hand side and we'll do the same again. Four pairs in cloth stitch. Twist the work twice. One pair in cloth stitch. Turning stitch with the next pair. Back through one pair in cloth stitch. Twist the workers twice. Back through your four pairs. Twist twice. Edge stitch. Pin up. And tension. So you can see that tensioning at every single stage is critical with these decorative braids, especially with something like this where you've got lots going on in the middle. So now returning to the centre again, we're going to work the left pair in cloth stitch through two pairs to the left and we're going to work that right hand pair from the middle in cloth stitch through two pairs to the right. With the four new pairs in the middle of the braid, so that's two and two, we're going to effectively work half a spider. So we're going to take the second pair from the left through two pairs to the right. Then we'll go back and take the first pair on the left through two pairs to the right. So that's crossed over all those in the middle. Now we're going to go back to our worker at the left hand edge. So I'm just tensioning those up. We're going to go back and pick up the worker from the left hand side. Through four pairs in cloth stitch. Twist the worker twice through three more pairs in cloth stitch and we'll leave that there. So that's now sitting in the middle. We'll go over to the right hand side and pick up the worker through four pairs in cloth stitch. Twist the worker twice through three pairs in cloth stitch and now that's at the middle. So our two new workers, or our two workers are now at the centre of the braid and we're going to work those two in cloth stitch. Now we're going to take these two workers back out to the outside edge. So starting with the left, through three pairs in cloth stitch, twist twice, four pairs in cloth stitch. Work your edge stitch, or in this case, your sewing on the left hand side. Place that pin and tension up. Then returning to the centre and take out other worker that was still sat there, and that comes out to the right three pairs in cloth stitch, twist twice, four pairs in cloth stitch, twist twice, work your edge stitch, pin up,
<clears throat> and tension across all pairs across the braid. That is now one complete pattern repeat. Um, and the point we're at now is the point where where we started the braid and worked the turning stitch to start the braid and took the two pairs out to the outside edges. Um, that's, that's the position we're at now. So this is a pattern repeat. Uh, I'm now going to work down as far as I have a dot on the pattern, I have a pinhole on the pattern. That's the point where I'm going to finish uh, this pattern. So I'm just coming up to start the final pattern repeat now and you can probably just about see I've got two little arrows on the right hand side of this braid and that's because uh, you need to work a couple of blind pins just to make sure that you level, your angle of the braid is correct coming down into the bottom. I haven't marked them on the simpler braid on version two because you only really need to put one and you should be able to see where that that's needed but I have marked it on this one so I'm just going to work a blind pin here so I've come to the pinhole I've not twisted the worker pin in and then when I come back I will work the edge stitch the next time so coming back to the middle to work the final repeat so the repeat starts with step four in the uh, instructions so twist the center pairs one uh, twice cross stitch those two together and twist them twice then we'll go over to the left hand side and come across through four i'll work this a bit quicker than i worked the previous one so through one then the turning stitch sewing now you can see I've managed to split that thread So as soon as I've noticed I've released it, so I've got a slightly separated bit of thread there and I'm just going to rub the crochet hook up and down the thread whilst just pulling gently on it and I've just eased that back. I'm going to give it a twist to put the twist back on it but then I think I'm going to pick up the other partner thread and I shall make my sewing using that because where that thread was split although I've managed to get it back it's now weakened it a little bit you can see that's that's weakened a little bit so I'll need to be extra careful when I'm tensioning that thread now because until we get past that bit it, it's going to be a bit weaker so tension there tension my turning stitch come to the right hand side and we're going to pick up that pair that's halfway through the blind pin so come in through four twist twice, in through one, turning stitch with the next pair, come back out through one, twist twice, out to the edge, twist twice and this time I'm going to work the edge stitch, remove that pin, 
and replacing the same pinhole under the edge stitch. So I'm going to do that at the next pinhole on the right hand side as well. Tension up. Oh, can you see I've managed to pull that in? That's what you need to be really careful of. So I'm just going to use my needle pin to just ease that out. If you are concerned, you can use a temporary support pin just to hold on to that. I'm going to put my needle pin in there just to support it. So coming back to the middle of the braid and step seven with the four centre pairs, twist the left hand pair twice and work it in cloth stitch and two twists through the next pair to the right. Then with the right hand of the four, twist that twice, cross stitch and twist, two twists to the pair to the left. Then our new two middle pairs, cross stitch and two twists, tension those up and then another cloth stitch. That's a really tricky bit to tension, that one. Now we're going to come in from the left hand side. So through four pairs in cloth stitch, being very gentle of that thread that was shredded there. That's my turning stitch. Back through one, twist twice, back through four. Going to make my sewing, and I think yes. So the the twist the the slightly damaged thread has been left in the uh, the centre in the turning stitch. So I'm going to pick up the lower of these two to make my sewing as usual. Let's take that next pin out so that we can get to it. in that lower pin again put our pin back in where I've made my sewing and tension up on the left hand side being careful to tension that turning stitch let's remember that we've got that slightly weaker thread there then coming over to the right hand side come through four, twist twice, cross stitch through one, make our turning stitch, back through that one, twist twice, back out to the edge. And we're doing a second blind pin here, so I'm going to pin under the worker but with, with no twists on the worker. tension up and with the two centre pairs the left hand pair goes in cloth stitch to the left through two pairs the right hand pair goes in cloth stitch to the right through two pairs then the new middle four pair we're going to work that half a spider so the second pair from the left goes through two to the right go back and get the first pair on the left through two pairs to the right tension that up carefully so that's all those six pairs in the middle we're going to tension up then we're going to go back to the left hand side Like we've got one more repeat after this one. So bring the right hand pair through four, twist twice, through 
tree. Now two workers are meeting in the middle, cloth stitch them through each other and then the new left hand worker comes out to the left through three, twist twice, through four. And we'll make a sewing on the left hand side. Just tension a little. As you can see, these sewings are really quite tight on the left-hand side. Put my pin back in. Just tension those on the left. So I pick up my other worker that's still waiting in the middle. Take that out to the right, three in cloth stitch, twist twice, one, two, three, four in cloth stitch at the edge, twist twice, work my edge stitch, remove that blind pin and repin, and I think we'll just shift that support pin down to there to stop that one pulling in tension up so you can see I am as I said before, constantly tensioning. I'm back ready to work the final pattern repeat. And then we'll bring together and finish the braid. Okay, so I've now completed uh, all repeats of the braid. I've completed step 12 and 13 where I've brought the workers in from the left and from the right. And we're now ready to where we would normally work step 14 um, to work cloth stitch through the two pairs in the middle. But because we're going to finish the braid and we want to end up with um, a single worker, we're going to work a turning stitch here like we did at the start. We're going to finish in the same way. So I'm going to do a half stitch and a pin and then a cloth stitch, which then makes up the turning stitch. Then this right hand pair is going to become a passive and the left hand pair is going to become the worker. I always take the, the passive as the one on the inside of the curve and the worker to be going out to the outside of the curve because you'll generally have fewer pairs on the inside to use so and you'll have more pairs on the outside so it makes sense to take the worker to the outside first because then you're using one of those extra pinholes um, so that you're less likely to need another blind pin or extra sewing on the inside edge. So I'm going to take this left hand pair out to the left through my three pairs in cloth stitch, twist twice, through my four pairs in cloth stitch and then you'll either work your edge stitch or in this case I'm working the sewing into the edge And then from this point, we're just going to carry on in plain cloth stitch as we reduce pairs out of the braid. The other thing we have to deal with at this point is on the right hand side, and if I just tension these up, this is where we meet the lower wing. So we've got one more pinhole to work here on the right hand side, which you can just see hidden under there. 
so we're going to work across and back and then we're going to be sewing into to that uh, lower wing from there on so let's get our pairs in order so we're going to continue working in cloth stitch all the way across the braid so there's no twists anywhere now we're literally just going into solid cloth stitch so that we can reduce the thickness of the braid start taking pairs out ready for sewing in down at the very bottom and for this wider wing when we get to the point where sewing in we want to be down to eight pairs so the other wing is six this one is eight pairs so let's work that last edge stitch on the right hand side it's sitting slightly above our support pin for our turning stitch that's not a problem because that support pin will come out in a row anyway tension a little I'm just going to give a light tensioning here and then I shall deal with it properly when I get to the other side because then I'll take that support pin out of the turning stitch so we'll come back in cloth stitch all the way across the row and you'll notice I'm not taking any pairs out just yet because we've only just finished the braid so plain cloth stitch will take up less space than a decorative braid so we can get away with a few more rows before we start to reduce our pairs so you can see I've forgotten to put my pin back in on the left hand side so let's replace that and we'll work our sewing on the left let's take that pin out back in below put the pin back in where we've just done our sewing and let's tension across all the passives across that row you can see you've got little bits of gap there where we would previously had twists in the braid as you go down that will settle down and the pairs will fill out the cloth stitch there it looks quite gappy don't worry about that at this stage so now if we look on this right hand side let's take that pair out that's better taken that pinhole out because what we're going to have to do is this is the point where the wings meet so with this pinhole here I'm going to sew the edge pair into the top bar and then my worker when it comes across I'll be sewing into that bottom bar so let's sew that edge pair into the top bar now this is quite an open bar because we use that different braid in that lower wing but remember if you were doing the two wings in the crescent braid that would be really tight um, and you would have to uh, take out a couple of pins either side to be able to work that sewing because it will be very tight. So I'm going to tie a reef knot and a half there. And lay that pair back. And then I'm going to go back and get my worker from the left hand side. And from now on you have no edge pairs, you're just working cloth stitch across the braid and working a sewing either into the side bars of your rib or into the side bars of the lower wing. And as we get narrower 
you're going to be throwing pairs out remember we've got we've just lost a pair so we've got 16 pairs so at some point between now and the end of the braid we need to lose eight of those so that you're sewing in with eight pairs at the bottom and now i'm going to sew this worker again i'm pushing up the the toppermost thread and I'm going to make the sewing with the, the lower thread of the worker. Again I'm not putting any twists on my worker because I want the cloth stitch to sit right up against the pin. If you put a twist on before you do the, the sewing then you're more likely to end up with a gap. So we'll come back to the left. And I probably won't take any pairs out for just a few more rows, actually, until it really starts to get narrow. Um, I, I tend to find that um, it's best to take pairs out probably a row or two after you think they need to come out, because you can almost guarantee that if you think you need to lose a thread, then you, you're going to be taking it out too soon. So when you think, oh, I can lose a thread, do another couple of rows and then take it out. Just take that support pin out there. Again, tension up. You can see that the cloth stitch passives, it's starting to tighten up now. The gaps are going away because the cloth stitch is filling the width of the braid a lot better. So I'm going to continue in this way and then when I throw out pairs I'll take two pairs and I'll lift the right hand thread of two pairs and I want to get to eight pairs at the very bottom of the braid. So I'm now at the very end of that braid. I've sewn into the final bar of the previous wing on the right hand side and now I've just got one last sewing to work into this last pinhole on the left. So I'm going to do that. Place that pin back in. And then to make sure there's no gaps between the wing and the body section, I'm going to work one final row of cloth stitch. And now we've got eight pairs to sew in across these pinholes. So we've got the first pin there has only got one bar. Do you remember we, we put, put that pin back in and only used that bar? So we've got one bar there. We've got two bars at the next pinhole, two at the next. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And then we've got two at the next. So a couple of the pinholes are going to need two sewings in a bar and the rest will be a single sewing. So I've sewn all the pairs in now. And what I've done is when I've sewn in this final cotton pair, because I didn't have a metallic pair on this left hand side, before I tied off the reef knot and a half, I've just laid in a metallic thread between the, between the two threads of this last pair and tied them off so that that metallic is attached to work the, the roll back. Then I've got a cotton pair, a metallic pair and a second cotton pair and as with the previous wing I'm going to roll back with two and a half pairs so I shall lay out one of these cotton threads and then work the rolled edge with the remaining two and a half pairs and again I shall roll all the way up this left hand side and sew back in when I reach the edge of the, the lower wing. 
so thank you for watching it's been a long video and as i said at the start i've put timings in the description section underneath the video so that you can skip to the particular part that you wish to to watch and also it means you can skip to a, a section if you if you wish to to view that same bit again and again that should now give you enough information alongside the pattern booklet to be able to work both these versions of the dragonflies i hope you've enjoyed working this design and i look forward to sharing some more patterns and more tutorials with you very soon